happy Friday. Wonderful. Let's jump right in for today's topic. Again, this is Prabha, the dietitian and nutritionist, and I'm here to talk about probiotic supplementation. So probiotic supplementation is an exciting and growing area of research, so I had a lot of fun looking into this for you all. The current literature supports their use for a variety of conditions, primarily within digestive health. And above all, I do want to say I always promote a food first approach, um, but sometimes supplementation is needed, so that's why I wanted to give this presentation today. So today I will discuss why probiotics are important, what probiotics are, I'll talk about natural occurring probiotic food sources, as well as my recommendations for selecting a probiotic supplement. And as usual, I want to start with a disclaimer that if you are immunocompromised, such as receiving cancer treatment, dialysis, or you do have a severe illness, probiotics could actually be more harmful than good. And in those cases, it should be avoided. While probiotics are generally safe uh, for most, it's best to talk to your primary care first before adding in supplements, whether or not you're healthy or immunocompromised. But let's jump right into the content that I have today for you guys. So I want to talk about first is why are probiotics beneficial? So research actually shows that after bariatric surgery, the bacteria in the gut in the digestive system often changes. This is possibly due to new changes in the digestive route. It could be coupled with um, the reduction in stomach acidity, uh, could be changes in the eating habits, um, but it is found that the usage of probiotics seems to reduce any gastrointestinal or digestive symptoms post-surgery, and it actually favors the increase of producing vitamin B12 and absorbing it, as well as potentiating your weight loss. So, what are probiotics? What am I talking about? So probiotics are live microorganisms. They can be in the form of bacteria and yeast, and they have really great health benefits. Um, many probiotics help your body function properly, especially with your digestive system. The body is actually full of bacteria, full of good and bad bacteria. And our good friendly bacteria um, that naturally reside in our intestines can actually help your body digest food. It can help produce vitamins, specifically vitamin K, which helps with our clotting and our blood health. And it plays a role in our immunity as well. And these friendly bacteria that you consume in probiotic form help your body maintain a healthy balance and keep the bad bacteria from overwhelming the system and causing problems. So many foods contain probiotics. I'm going to list a few and then give you some strategies for adding those into your diet. So some foods include yogurt, specifically a yogurt that says live and active cultures, unpasteurized sauerkraut, miso, like miso soup, uh, some fermented soft cheeses, for example, Gouda. You can add in kefir, fermented uh, milk. You can add in cottage cheese, buttermilk or acidophilus milk, and tempeh as well. So some tips I have for adding in probiotic foods um, includes you can add fermented salsa or sauerkraut with eggs in the morning. You can use coconut water kefir or a smooth or a like uh, yogurt in your smoothies in the morning. You can add fermented vegetables in, into a stir fry or on top of salads. And you can choose miso dressings for your salads as well. 
So moving away from the food, let's talk about the supplement route. In addition to the probiotics being found naturally in our body and in foods, probiotics are also sold as dietary supplements. And I will say quality does matter. Like the vitamins talk that I gave in the past, you do want to pay careful attention. You want an effective dose. You want quality strains of bacteria that are targeted for your symptoms. And you want to make sure that you have the ability to absorb it well, that bioavailability that I've talked about. The most common bacteria used in probiotic supplements that I see on the market are lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. So some strains of lactobacillus can help with diarrhea and it may help uh, individuals suffering from lactose intolerance um, and it can actually be found in yogurt form as well and other fermented foods. Um, if you go the bifidobacterium route, this can actually be found in dairy products um, and can actually help ease the symptoms of IBS. So it can be like abdominal pain, gas, bloating. So when it comes to selecting a probiotic, this is where it gets a little tricky. So I have some tools and guidelines for you guys. So when selecting a probiotic, you want to choose one that is 50 CFU. The CFU, that stands for Colony Forming Units. And this just means that there's an effective number of strains of bacteria in the product that you've chosen. Probiotics come in many forms. It can be pills, powders, liquids, capsules, uh, chewable tablets. There's all sorts on the market. And for bariatric surgery uh, patients, I do recommend starting with a chewable or um, the like gummy form um, or like a liquid or powder first, and then transitioning to a capsule um, if you choose so down the road. And when it comes to brands, there's a lot of over-the-counter probiotics available. Um, some of the ones that I like is um, one called Align. I like Florister, um, Garden of Life Probiotic, and Culturelle. And again, I'll have a handout posted after this with um, the products on there so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but specifically, the Align brand probiotic supplement contains Bifidobacterium infantis, which has actually been used in clinical studies. And it has been shown to reduce symptoms of bloating, cramping, and stool frequency in those with um, irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. Um, I do have a few of the studies um, that I can just briefly go through, but in a study of 362 patients with IBS, those who took the Infantis experienced a significant decrease in symptoms, and those who took other forms of probiotics or placebo didn't experience reduced symptoms. Um, another similar study um, specifically looked at, they had 77 subjects and they compared B. Infantis to another strain called L. salivarius, as well as um, comparing to a placebo. And they followed this for eight weeks. And it showed that the B. infantis actually caused a greater reduction in those symptoms that we talked about rather than the L. salivarius. And um, so that just kind of goes to show that the strain does matter. So uh, when it comes to taking the probiotics, probiotics are most effective when taken with meals unless the label says otherwise. And on that note about the label, it's really important to be looking at the label and packaging because they do differ from product to product. Um, be sure when you are looking at the package information to be looking at the strain. You wanna look at the quality of CFU or colony forming units. You um, wanna look at the quantity the serving size, the health benefits 
You want to look at the proper storage conditions. Sometimes it needs to be refrigerated. Other times it's shelf stable. Um, and then you do want to make sure that you check for an expiration date. And you also want to be mindful that if they are coming in the gummy form, which I get a lot of patients um, sending me images of the gummy forms, the gummies do have added sugar quite often. Um, so you kind of have to evaluate if that's going to put you over your 25 gram limit. Um, I find that for some patients, if they're getting bariatric specific vitamins for all their other vitamins, they have room for that um, sugar containing probiotic, but others who may be consuming more generic brands of vitamins um, and are especially choosing gummy forms of their other vitamins, this could be something that puts them over the limit and may not be as beneficial. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I also want to say it does take time. It takes about two weeks to two months before you observe benefits from probiotics. So it's important to be patient and consistent before giving up. And with that, I will say that for those of you who are entering um, bariatric surgery and are preparing, it's really important that you discontinue the probiotic two weeks before surgery. So if you are booking your bariatric surgery and you are like a month or more out, I would say it's a good idea to add in a probiotic and build up that good bacteria and for you to be able to jump in and get those effects then in that two week to two month period that I just talked about. But if you are booking and your surgery is in um, two or three weeks, I would just wait to take your probiotic until you are post-op. Um, and once you're post-op, you can take your probiotic one week um, after surgery. So that's something to keep in mind and pay attention to. And always feel free to ask me clarifying questions um, for your situation, and I'm happy to help you. And above all, you always want to consult your healthcare provider before starting probiotics and other supplements just to make sure that it is the right um, fit for you, that it's effective, and that it's not contradicting other medications that you're taking. So I want to jump in and look at the questions um, that I have. So I have a question of when is the best time to take a probiotic? You can take your probiotic with your other supplementations. I would just, I would follow the directions that's on your probiotic because they can differ from product to product, but I do find that most often you should be taking it with a meal and that's how most of your vitamin supplementation should be is taking it with a meal so that you have some nutrition in you. Um, because otherwise, if you take a lot of these things on an empty stomach, you're going to get stomach irritation from that. Um, let me look at the other um, products here or questions. I use raw probiotics ultimate care. Is that okay? Um, yeah, I think that one... That one, I believe, isn't that Garden of Life? I think that is Garden of Life. If it is, that one is like 100 billion CFU. So I would say that that one is fine. Um, so I would say that's a good source and one that I actually quite often recommend. Um, and again, I'll put the handout that I'm promising you guys after this video so you can see um, the other products that I suggest as well. And if you do have questions about a different product, you are more than welcome. You can send me um, a screenshot of it via email at nutrition at Mexico Bariatric Center, or you can send me a text with the screenshot as well, and I'm happy to look into it for you. But remember that, that strain matters, whether you're doing lactobacillus or B. infantis, um, the bifidobacterium, um, and CFU matters, the 50 billion is the minimum. Um, let me check out if there's more questions from you all. 
I zoomed through all of that, but I'm so happy that you guys logged in today. I don't see any more questions, but if there are more questions, feel free to just drop them below in the comment box and then I will reply back to you um, after the video is posted. And again, thank you all for tuning in. It was so great getting to catch up with you guys. And if you have um, ideas or topics that you want me to cover coming up, feel free to drop that below as well. I know I had a request to do um, videos that were more specific for different surgeries um, and diet guidelines for that. So that is something that I am working on and taking note of. But if you have other ideas that you're wanting to know more about, let me know and I'm happy to bring that to you guys. Happy Friday, and I hope you all have a good weekend, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.